it's up to the casual workers to clean it all up. Some of these activists have been born into privilege where their parents can pay exorbitant fees to send them to study at a private school in Hong Kong. Their lives are so far removed from their middle class and working class counterparts that they begin to feel insecure about their privilege and think, what's the best way to boost my self-confidence? Well, claim that I'm non-binary. And then they'll make a speech at some rallies and they'll, uh, they'll announce, you have no idea what it's like to not have a non-binary marker on your passport. <laughs> or perhaps they'll carry a banner with the words, no more dead trans kids. Mm. Question for all of you. How many of you knew a kid when you were younger who claimed they were trans? I mean, we all wanted to be princesses and butterflies in preschool, but did any kid under the age of 10 use the word trans? No. Can you imagine a young child back in those days demanding to their parents, friends and school to use the opposite pronouns to address them and failure to do so would result in their suicide? How do you think everyone would have reacted? Mm. Would, it be, would they have been quick to cater to the kid? I don't think so. We're being shown clips of trans kids by mainstream media and it's usually the parents who say uh, well, I knew my kid Bobby was a girl as soon as he was playing with Barbie dolls and wanted to sing like Elsa from Frozen. It's usually the mainstream media um, and the parents pushing forward this narrative, not the kids themselves. With the narrative of trans kids being pushed into the public consciousness comes puberty blockers. Trans activists and their allies hail puberty blockers as life-saving healthcare for trans kids. Some people go along with this and they say, well, I trust the experts and this is what they advise. Seriously, you have to outsource your opinions to an expert to decide if puberty blockers are morally wrong or right. This is where we're at. Young women with eating disorders have, are having their breasts chopped off. Instead of this being viewed as a cry for help, they're glorified on social media, hailed as stunning and brave. Detransitioners are coming out publicly and discussing the effects um, and the mental anguish and trauma their surgeries um, and hormone replacement therapy has had on their mental health. The most harrowing result of all of this is the loss of sexual uh, function mm. and the fact that they have to come to terms with that they may ne never have children. Bearing your soul to the trans community as a detransitioner pays a heavy price. There's zero sympathy and compassion and a mob response of vitriol. So much for a community that prides itself on self-love and kindness. Some of these people transitioned when they were very young and feel betrayed by medical professionals whom they trusted. Some have taken legal action and these accounts, coupled with an independent review, led to the only gender clinic in the UK, the Tavistock Centre, being shut down. This has been a major victory for those who care about the well-being of minors and the protection of safeguards. The foundations on which gender identity ideology were built are slowly crumbling. It's happening gradually, but we still have a long way to go. I hope more people will come to their senses and will feel embarrassed in the future for parroting cold speak. Absolutely. Well done. Would anyone else like to speak? Yay. Mine's going to be pretty, sh pretty oh. short, so somebody else get ready. Um, the Friday before last, I fronted up to Sunnybank Hospital for a colonoscopy. So when I looked at my discharge uh, papers on Monday, I was quite surprised to see that they had me listed as my sex was female. But uh, they recommended that I, as Christine Carey, they referred to me as they, come back in five years for another colonoscopy. So I thought, I felt absolutely disgusted, assaulted, bloody erased, and so I phoned them up. And uh, I only got, so I don't know, nobody in authority particularly, but they said they'd follow it up for me. They said it may have been a typo. I said, don't bet on it. I bet it's been a directive. And uh, they did phone me back a couple of days later and they said, you were right. There's been a directive. 
So I'd like to get to the bottom of this, and if anyone else has seen their discharge papers and recommendations, maybe they could check them over. Because when did this start to come in? And I don't think we should allow it to continue. Thank you. I'll say another thing. Is it any wonder that women have lost complete trust in the medical systems that are meant to be put there in place to protect us? When myself and another lady a few weeks ago got contacted from the Australian government saying that our comments condemning men trying to breastfeed their babies was against the law. Men trying to breastfeed babies, taking cocktails of hormones and drugs to excrete something from their nipples resembling milk, and this is meant to be completely fine and okay and healthy for a newborn baby. There's no wonder women are losing complete faith in the medical systems that are there to protect us and our children. It's absolutely disgusting. And this is a direct result of people like Shannon Fentiman claiming that men can be women. It's a direct result of claiming that women can have penises. And it has to stop. That's all I need to say. Anybody else? It stopped filming. Yeah, I'll just take the police. In Australia, um, there's, at the moment, there's no uh, elections that are coming up, but the first election will be Queensland 2024. And within a two-year period, all the elections around the country will take place. And I think this is where we need to make them know, our uh, politicians and political parties, that if they support gender ideology, they won't get the vote. So we really need to concentrate on the electorates, um, and particularly in Queensland uh, with Shannon Fentiman, we're going to have a, a concerted effort to undermine her in the next um, state election. Because yeah. uh, when we did the action that Leah mentioned in Waterford outside of Shannon Fenderman's office, it was peak hour, we were there for an hour. And the amount of overwhelming support we got just shows the public are not in favour of this. No one cares how anyone wants to identify. You can identify as whoever you want, but you're not taking another minority. Um, their, their rights away from Absolutely. Them. So we've had enough. We're not going to sit back and take it any longer. So uh, we, need, we need to educate the public because even um, we try to crowdfund because it's going to cost a lot for, you know, leafleting, um, having banners and stuff like that. You can't get a crowdfunding platform that will accept a woman raising money for women's rights. There's not one single crowdfunding platform. They will not allow billboards either. So they're trying to shut us down. And um, yeah, so 2024 in October, uh, the Queensland state election. So we've got until now, until October 2024, to get the message out to the public and to make these politicians realise that they are the ones in a vulnerable position. If they don't change their stance and start protecting all of us rather than this minority of people, um, as I said, we don't care who they want to identify. They could, I, it's got, got nothing to do with us, but leave us alone and stop compelling our speech and our thoughts. So to all the politicians out there, if you think you're safe, you're wrong because we're coming for you. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Police station, is that right? Yeah. I went there a few years ago and I'll tell you the story because I went there with a young woman who had a sexual assault allegation to make. Now that woman, uh, who was a girl when I met her, was a refugee from Syria. And I was involved in the church uh, helping refugees with little things like phones and little things that they needed to connect to. I also had a group of girls who I was talking to about uh, the rights they had in Australia. There was a man in the group 
who I, I, I picked as a predator then. They hang around because girls are both female and poor mm. and without protection. So that's why they hang around. But he waited for three years to make his move until she turned 18 and gained her trust and got her into a situation where she was alone and had invited him into a house and then the word is just his against hers. Mm. Now what I had done was earlier on I had I had sent messages to the church, to the leadership to say this is a red flag, this is a red flag and they may have been ignored but when he finally made his move and I contacted the church, they, they moved immediately because they had procedures in place, right? They took years. It wasn't yesterday that the church started taking procedures against creepy men. It took years and years and years and years of women trying to alert the, the authorities and the structures about the dangers that males are to women, to females, particularly vulnerable females. Now, the guy in this bloody police thing basically told me to piss off. Mm. He, he said that there's no way you can, you know, there's anything that you can do, you can make a complaint. Anyways, my point was, we don't need any more shit. You know, we don't need any more problems to face to protect women and girls. Once we've lost the definition, once we've lost that in law, we are fucked. Yeah. And that is the truth. We, we cannot... It's like we're going back 20 years to say, no, 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 I'm sorry, there's a child here, I shouldn't be swearing.